Uh, hi, Shahir. I think you are Shahir's brother, right? Uh, can you just help me uh, just press the record because I can't record the thing. Thank you. Yeah, so I guess I'm just going to start now. Uh, since there's only like three of us, Krisha and Amina, uh, you guys can stop me anytime you want uh, because there's only a few. Don't be shy. Uh, yeah, I I hope I'm, I'll be able to give you all some actual... Yeah, can you guys see the uh, PowerPoint? So. Okay, yeah, so I'm just gonna, at any point, just stop me or just shout out because I don't, I can't see the chat when I'm sharing my screen actually. Okay, so hi guys, uh, thank you for coming again today. Uh, so today, as I as on the poster, I'm going to talk about how to sign up for the UK FPO. Uh, I'm talking specifically to for RCSI graduate because I guess all of us are the three of four of us here are RCSI graduate. So my name is Dr. Abigail Tan. So I'm just going to talk about. Um, so this is my journey. So I graduated from Padana University, RCSI, Malaysia. Okay, uh, I was from class of 2020 and then COVID happened. So I went and took my MRCS Part A in April 2021 and I managed to complete it. Subsequently, in 2021, I went to RCSI Dublin and I did my Master's in Surgical Science and Practice and I graduated recently. This was in November. The picture was taken in November recently. And then now I'm actually in the process of applying for the UK FPO. So I hope I'll be able to give you some tips and tricks about uh, the best route and the easiest way to go about this. So as we all know that we have all attended medical school for four to six years. Okay. So and then what you have to do now is to apply to a two year foundation program. So I'm just mainly I'm going to talk about how do you apply to this program. And then all of the other steps comes much later on. So we will be applying to this, what we call foundation year one and foundation year two. Yeah. So just for the recording purposes, if what if you are not an RCSI graduate, you will have to check with GMC for your recognition of your degree. And you might need to take PLEP 1 and PLEP 2. Uh, that's another story that I will have to uh, cover the next time. Okay, so for the UK FPO, this is the most important website that you will have to check every single day, actually. Once everything starts rolling, you have to check this every day because you get all of your information, all of your forms from this website. And every day they will, uh, when your cycle of intake starts, more or less they, they will upload everything from here. And everything here is the most important a document, uh, yeah, it's the final document that you can get from UKFPO. So I've attached the link down here so you can try to uh, access it when you need it. So I've just uh, distilled the steps for applying to UKFPO for you guys. Uh, there are a lot of small, small details that you can read about in the handbook. I'm not going to bore you with all the small details because it's it's very boring, but you have to know it. I'm just going to give you a big picture, like the main steps that you have to do and you must do in order to uh, start working as a FY in uh, the UK. So the first step is GMC provisional registration. So you will need to get this done ASAP. I will talk more about that later. And then secondly, you have to do a eligibility application because we are all international medical graduates, what we call IMG. So you have to do... Uh, Basically, as the name suggests, you have to apply and see if you're eligible to apply for the UKFPO or not. Thirdly, you have to do your UKFPO application. And fourth, uh, you might you might or might not have to sit for the National Clinical Assessment. Uh, later, I will tell you what's the criteria that you might have to sit for it. And last but not least is the Situational Judgment Test, SJT as we call it. Okay, so... 
this is my suggested timeline for you guys. If you guys are applying for UK FPO 2024, which is the next intake. So I believe uh, those who have recently graduated, you've gotten your parchment from the parchment is a beautiful certificate which you frame and it's like really for us. It's like a three size with all the Latin words. So once you get your parchment, you should start getting your GMC registration. Actually, um, actually you can actually start now in December if you're free. Uh, because this can take time depending on your university. So get it done now. Uh, it shouldn't cost a lot actually. Uh, next, the eligibility most for this year, eligibility actually started in June. The handbook came out in June and the eligibility application process started in June. And then for the UK FBO application around September, then the National Clinical Assessment, we call NCA, uh, it took place in uh, November this year. And SJT, again, for this year, it, uh, it runs from December to January. So I'm just giving here is estimated uh, months based on what has happened this year. So please do check the latest handbook as you go into the next intake cycle. So I've take a copy. I have screenshotted this from this year's uh, UKFPO program. This is a high level applicant timeline. This is usually the first document that they will publish on the UKFPO website. Okay. So it's a few pages long and it has all the dates that you must pay attention to. So it's a few pages long. So you, when the new one comes out and you really have to open it, I would suggest print it out, highlight whatever you want, put the dates in the iCal so you do not miss any dates. Because once you miss a date, your whole application is it's thrown out and you will waste a year waiting for the next intake. So this document is very important. You can find it on the UKFPO website. And I took this from the applicant handbook. OK, so I'm just for today. I'm only talking about the process that is in red in the uh, in the red boxes. So. Uh, we are considered IMG, so we have to put this uh, application in the eligibility application. And then you will register for UKFPO, then you will then all of this will happen. And I'll talk more about it uh, coming. So I'm just going to go back as if you remember, I was talking about step one, step two, step three and step four and five. So I'm just going to go deeper into the details of it. So step one is you have to get registered with the GMC first. OK, so like I said, I recommend if you can once you get your parchment or if you already have it, do it now because we are CSI graduate. It's much easier. We do not need to take PLAB. Go to the GMC's website. Yeah, so start early. Do it now. Don't wait until when the eligibility starts because when you because you must understand that UKFPO and GMCT are two separate entities. These two um, organizations they do not communicate with each other. So if one is delayed and the other is not, they are not going to accept your application both ways. Yeah. So go to GMC online, sign up for an account, uh, and then. Go and sign up for your provisional registration. Uh, provisional registration, you, yeah, it, you have to sign up for provisional registration. If you qualify for a full registration, then you, you do not qualify for the UKFPO program at all. So only people who are eligible for provisional registration is considered for the UK Foundation program. So their WhatsApp number is here. I've given it to you guys. So it's very useful. They are very efficient. You can just text them and they will reply you during, of course, UK working hours. Then you do not need to uh, make international calls, which, which costs a lot, actually. So and you must bear in mind. To get registered on the register, you must have you must prove that your IELTS is at least a band seven. Uh, yeah, this is one of the requirements that they require. Just bear in mind that this is band seven. Yeah, OK. And you must, uh, yeah. So I've just attached for you a screenshot of the GMC's website. So it looks something like this. You have to look for this page, which I have put the link down here. 
So the GMC online uh, button is here. You just have to click it and go through all the steps. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have a screenshot. I can't show you how is the application application form and whatnot because they changed the system when I did it versus now. So you just have to try and uh, apply it. If you have any problem, you have to uh, WhatsApp them or call them if you need. OK, so now we are moving on to step two. OK, um, so we're going to talk about eligibility now. Um, so as the name suggests, it's basically an application to see if you are even eligible to apply to the UKFPO or not. OK, so this you the handbook, this handbook, as you can see here. The handbook on your right hand side usually comes out in around June. And the application also come opens in June. OK, I'm just going to highlight what you will need to prepare for your eligibility application. So the first thing you will need is what we call a Dean statement. So every year they will have every year will have its own Dean statement template, which again, you get it from the UK FPO website. You download the template, send it to your Dean, let them fill it up and you just get it back from them. However, this might take time depending how long your university takes to respond. So do it early again in case your dean is uh, uh, does not process it as efficiently as you want it to. Secondly, you must be able to prove that you can get a provisional registration by the time you start work, which is the following year. Because if it's, yeah, you must be able to prove that you are able to get provisional registration. So this is why I suggest that you start doing your GMC now so that you would have your GMC number ready to fill in the application form. OK, uh, thirdly, the, the next thing is you need to prove IELTS again. But do you remember I was saying that the GMC's IELTS proficiency was only band seven? So that's quite an average score, I believe uh, for the eligibility, they require a band 7.5 in each of the component. You cannot have one as band 7 and the rest band 8.5 and it makes up to a total of band 7.5. It doesn't work that way. Uh, they do not accept. It must be each component band 7.5 at least. So again, please do um, take IELTS early because I, I did join a Telegram group and many of them were fumbling because it was very close to the deadline and they had to book the IELTS test, which takes probably a few working days to do it. And then you need to sit for the test and then you have to wait for the results. And that takes if you are sitting the paper based exam, it takes around one week to get your results. And if you're taking the computer based exam, it takes around three days. So these all these processes takes up time. So and Again, touch wood, what if you what if uh, the student doesn't make it right? Because you need a band 7.5. If you don't make it, then you have to again go through the whole application, book an IELTS exam, sit the exam, wait for the results. So it can take up to a few weeks to actually get your IELTS, the desired IELTS result. Start early. If you can also, you can do it now. So secure the band 7.5 in your hands first. So next is the National Clinical Assessment. Um, you will be informed if you need to take the exam once you've submitted your eligibility and you get the result of your eligibility or not. OK. Uh, so. The eligibility, uh, this is the website I've taken a screenshot for you guys. This is for this year, uh, which what I had to go through. So these are the main documents that you need to give them. So first is proof of ID. It's a very basic thing, just a copy of your passport. Dean statement, like I said, you have to download the form from the foundation program. OK, uh, and get your dean to fill it up. Next is your medical degree. This is your parchment, the the big A3 size uh, uh, document. Again, just upload it onto the portal. GMC, like I said, you must be able to prove that you are able to get provisional registration before you start work. So if you have gotten your GMC done now, you can just put in your GMC number and then it's sorted. Uh, same 
English language proficiency, it's either IELTS or OET. I took IELTS because I'm more familiar with the system. Uh, next is the clinical assessment. I put it, I have placed this in green because it's, it's not everybody has to do it, but it's, um, if you, if you need to take it, they will inform you, but you have to get it done if you fall in the category of needing to take the clinical assessment. And the right to work is, uh, basically you just tick a box and say, oh, I need, I need a sponsorship from the government or, if you if you already have family there, you don't need it. Uh, then you can. It's just basically a immigration thing. It's not a. You don't need to give much document. Just it's just a tick box exercise. Okay, so this is Oreo. So I'm just gonna introduce you what is Oreo. So Oreo is a portal where you do all your application for the UKFPO on this website. Okay, it's a government website. So you can only create an account when the eligibility application opens okay so which this means it's around june to july so yeah so i put an i have placed an arrow uh, for the uk foundation program so when the eligibility application opens go to this website make an account register an account okay and then you will see that there is there will be a box that says el eligibility applications Okay, so I have given you a screenshot of what this is my uh, eligibility form. It's just a very simple form. Put your contact information, your upload all the degrees. That's why I said if you get all your documents together when the UKFPO eligibility opens, it's very easy to fill up the form. So you can just everything is just PDF upload it onto the port Oreo portal and just submit it's it takes less than I guess less than five minutes and double checking and whatnot yeah so for eligibility some of the tips and tricks uh you have to please 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 triple check everything because they have they have explicitly said that they will throw out the application if something is missing or something is wrong and they will not inform you what what has been missing or what has been filled up wrongly so and many actually on the telegram group that I joined for UKFPO, many, many people's application was actually thrown out because um, yeah, because something was missing. So please triple check everything, double check, get someone to read it for you just to uh, proofread it for you. And always read the latest handbook every year, the handbook changes. So read the latest handbook cover to cover so that you don't miss out all the small, small details. There are small details, but they are very important, uh, which I, uh, I'm i unable to highlight it here today. Okay, moving on. Uh, now we are going to go into the actual application itself. Once you step two is eligibility, which starts in June, and then they will process it before August, you will know whether your eligibility is successful or not. Okay, so there's only three outcomes from eligibility that can happen. One is uh, rejected. Secondly is approved. And thirdly is approved with conditions that you have to take the national clinical ass assessment. So if it's rejected, there is an appeal process in place for eligibility. You just have to put in your appeal and see what they say. Uh, if it's approved without conditions, so congratulations, you can just move on to the next step, which is UKFPO application. If they say that you have to, your eligibility is successful, but with conditions to take the NCA, you will still have to put in your application in August and September, to September, but you will have to see the NCA, the National Clinical Assessment in November. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so for UKFPO, three programs are offered. So only three, only these three are offered. So uh, foundation program, uh, foundation priority program, and specialized foundation program. Yeah, so uh, guys, if you guys have any questions, just uh, shout out because I can't see the chat. Yeah, and if I'm speaking too fast, please let me know. Uh, so... The UKFPO application opens in August to September. Check the latest handbook so that you know when it's open. 
and you will get around two weeks to fill up this in Oreo, again, the portal, and then you have to submit it. So in the form, you will have this thing called a ranking, where you can rank where you want to go in the UK. So, but it's, it, the system is very odd that you can submit your application. You must submit your application uh, around two weeks from the opening date. But ranking, you can always just change your ranking up until February 2024. Okay, uh, for specialized program, it's much earlier, but it's a good thing because you have time to research where you want to go. You can just submit in your application, but you can always change your ranking uh, to a much later date. Yeah, so uh, yeah. So this year, they the UK FPO, they had two handbooks. So this is one of them, which I've attached here for you. So basically this handbook, it's like 40 over pages. It's a PDF, which is has a lot of details on how to fill up the form in Oreo. Okay, and then you they will give you information on references because you will need to supply them with one reference from uh, one lecturer or professor from your undergraduate years uh, for them to contact as reference. And it also contains important dates on the specialized foundation program and foundation priority program. And also how to accept and reject an offer, a job offer. So I'm just going to highlight on the accept and reject an offer. So when after all of this, you finish all your application thing and it's time that they offer you a job. Uh, if you've applied for all three, of this foundation program, foundation priority program, and specialized foundation program, you must know in what order or how to accept or reject the program according to your own preference. If unfortunately, if you have uh, incorrectly rejected or accept something, uh, you if it's not what you want, you you are unable to change once you have accepted the offer. And if you miss the deadline to accept the offer, again, you will, you worst case is you will be withdrawn from the program. Okay, so just make sure you read it and you will know how to accept and reject an offer. So this is the second handbook. Again, it is almost 50 pages. Um, it's again, you have to read it uh, cover to cover. It's very detailed. I'm not going to bore you with all the detailed information. So it just very generally, it just tells you what is the UKFPO, which is the foundation program to train junior doctors. And they're telling, and also they will say what programs are offered. So the programs are the three programs, which I've mentioned, the foundation program, foundation priority program, and specialized foundation program. And it gives you the details of deaneries. So I'm not sure if you're familiar what is what are deaneries. So I found this picture of a map of, of the UK deanery. So it's the, this is the map of United Kingdom. So they have divided the locations, the country into deaneries, which are all color coded in, in different colors. Uh, yeah, so it's like dark blue, light blue, navy blue, green, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure if this is the latest map, but I, I'm unable to find the date of this map, but it's somewhat something like this. So I just want to highlight that you, if it doesn't matter to you where you go in the UK, if you are fine, you're very adventurous to try out things, you, I don't think you, then you do not need to research about where you want to rank, where you want to rank your foundation program. This is where ranking comes in, okay? But however, I would like to highlight to you that in the UK, right, you have rotations and if you, and the rotations can be in different hospitals. Throughout the two years, you will have different, different rotations and each rotation can be in different hospitals. It doesn't mean that you are allocated to one hospital and you will be there for the next two years of your life. Okay, this is where you should know your deanery size, actually. If you look at number 11, it is very big. This is Scotland, okay? Because it is so big, there is a chance that you might be allocated to 
one hospital here for surgical rotation and you might be in the south. And then there's also a chance that you might be allocated to a deanery, uh, another hospital up way up north. So it's very difficult for you to get accommodation, housing, and you might need to get a car because you will have to travel just for that four months of rotation. So bear that in mind. Some deaneries are very small, like London. So uh, it's not a problem even if you go, if you get a different hospital for different rotations. So bear the size in mind as well. So these are some of the tips and tricks I've uh, found when I was doing my ranking and I'm still in the process of doing it. So like I said, different rotations might be in different hospitals. Uh, you must also look at your own lifestyle. What do you like? Do you like big cities like London or do you like um, quiet cities Like you don't mind quiet cities such as Scotland? Do you like urban areas, rural areas? Uh, do you like large cities or small villages? And the cost of living is a very important thing because the cost of living in London is very expensive. And you do get a little bit more if you work in London, but you must bear in mind that living and eating electricity and whatnot is very expensive in London. It might not be enough based on your lifestyle. Whereas if you go to somewhere more rural, you might be able to uh, have more extra money. Like you, you are able to save more money because it's much cheaper. Yeah. So now I'm just going to talk about the three programs that are, give, are provided by the foundation program. So first is specialized foundation program. So this program is uh, and is written or engineered for people who wants to do research or teaching or develop their leadership or management skills. OK, it's it requires more work because during if you do apply to this foundation program, a specialized foundation program, you have to fill up this thing called white space questions. If you can see in my screenshot. Yeah, and you have to go through interviews, which happens around November to December. And uh, yeah, so you will need to go through. These are the two extra things that people who apply to specialized foundation program uh, needs to go through. Yeah, so white space questions, I'll give you a sample of what they are. And then interviews, uh, like it depends on which hospital you choose, you will have to go for the interview. Some allows you to do it online, some you have to be in person. So you just have to check the list uh, for specific to your year. So what are the pros of doing specialized foundation program? The pro is you get to choose the hospital you want to go. Usually you are locked into that hospital for the two years. Uh, you might get to write or publish papers because it's research or teaching or leadership based. Uh, so, and the third one is you are likely to stay in the same hospital for the two years of your UK FPO. The cons is extra workload. Why do I say that? It's because even though you are in a specialized program, you are required to complete the same amount of training as every other foundation uh, foundation doctor. So you must go through all the rotations as well. On top of that, you have to do what you have signed up for. Either it's research, leadership or teaching. Yeah, so I've attached here a, a link to this YouTube channel. It's really good. They actually uh, interview like past applicants uh, on how they did their white space question and interviews. Like you have to really prepare for all these white space questions and interviews. It's not just like you just turn up and just wing it. Yeah, you, you do have to prepare for it. OK. So white space questions, I hope you all can see it. These are the white space questions for this year. So as you can see, they will ask you what is your single best clinical research achievement? Uh, give one example of uh, research, education or teaching, leadership, teamwork. Yeah. I, very subjective questions which you have to prepare and answer it uh, like uh, academically if you really want to get into the specialized foundation program. It's, it is competitive, of course, uh, but if you are up for it, go, do go for it. I did not apply to this because, uh, of, uh, due to personal reasons, but if you want, just go for it. 
Uh, next, I'm going to talk about the foundation priority program. So this, as, as the uh, UKFPO has stated on their website, is basically to support uh, areas of UK that has been difficult to attract and retain doctors. So one of the reasons, maybe it's very far out, very rural, or yeah. So what are the pros of do, choosing a foundation priority program is you get to choose the hospital for the two years that you're going to be there. Okay. And you get extra money and all extra diplomas or subsidiaries for postgrad certification. However, the con is it can be in a rural area. So it all depends on if you if this is what you want. Yeah. And there, there is a handbook for it as well. Okay, so I just screenshotted this from the handbook. Uh, in the handbook, it will say or it will list out all the posts and the incentive and the hospitals that offer foundation priority program. This is just one of the hospitals which I just screenshot to show you guys. So in East Kent Hospital, so there are six posts for and they are offering funded postgrad online courses at F2. So they give you their funding postgrad certification, postgrad in digital health and postgrad in leadership. So these are just one of the incentives that you can get. I think some of it they're giving seven thousand pounds and some hospitals are actually giving free accommodation. So you have to check the handbook and see what is uh, what do you like and what do you want. Okay, so allocation of jobs, foundation program. There's nothing much to talk about foundation program. It's just that you, you, you just sign up for the program, choose the deanery, and you just go and work. There's nothing special about it. Okay, so uh, just to recap, specialized foundation program is for those people who wants to do extra work on top of their foundation program, which is either research teaching or management slash leadership. Next is foundation priority program. Uh, basically, these are places of trust that offers extra incentive if you go there and you get to choose the hospitals, but it might be in rural areas. And thirdly, it's just a foundation program where you just go through the whole rotation in wherever you, you are offered. So I just want to highlight that specialized foundation program the ranking closes in october this is for all of these dates are for this year's uh ukfpo application it's not um if for next intake you must all read the handbook properly i'm just giving an example just to illustrate my point so for specialized foundation program uh this year's ranking closes on in october which uh, two months ago, the interviews uh, took place in October to November, and job offers will be given out in January next year. Okay, and then if you look at foundation priority and just the normal foundation, the ranking closes on the second. Uh, sorry, in February two zero two three for both programs, and job offers will be given. Uh, in April 2023. So as you can see, Specialized Foundation Program gets job offer way earlier than the other two programs. So I just want you to bear that in mind. Yeah. So step four is NCA, National Clinical Assessment. So who will need to take them is people who, uh, from the graduation date to the date you start work, if it exceeds two years, you will have to take the NCA. It's just bear in mind, it's not the application date. It's not the date where you put in your UKFPO application. It's from your the date you graduate to the date you start work. So if it exceeds two years, you will have to sit for this NCA. Uh, it's a 12 OSCE station. Uh, there are more info in the next two lecture series, which uh, just uh, refer to the poster for the date. Uh, it's eight hundred and fifty pounds. You have to pay it on your own. It's it's carrier in Manchester, and you must attend in person. It's not a very difficult exam, but they expect you to perform in a certain, uh, like 
NHS level, FY1 level uh, doctor. Okay. So last but not least is the situational judgment test. No one can escape this test. You cannot get any appeals or escape this. Everyone must take it. So you must book this in October. Usually the booking opens in October. Thank God it's free. Uh, and you must sit the exam in either December or January the following year. Uh, and you'll get the results in March the following year as well. You can either take it in the center or you can get it proctored at home. Uh, I wanted to take it in the center, but in Malaysia, the center was very limited and it was fully booked for all the dates. So I had to do it proctored at home. Uh, preparation and resources. Uh, there is, I will, my last lecture series is about how to prepare for the SJT. So SJT is very important. Uh, basically, it's an aptitude test, but it determines like a lot in where you are going or whether you are offered a spot. Yeah. So I wonder if you guys have, this is where I, I think I finished talking. Do you guys have any questions? Just shout out because I can't see the chat when I'm sharing. Uh, you can type. You can type it as well. I can. I stop my screen sharing so I can answer any questions if you guys are typing. Uh, hi Abdullah Ahmed. So I, you can, you actually cannot register now. Yeah, because you will need your parchment to do all of the things that uh, I've mentioned above. But you should, um. Pay attention to what, like get an idea what um, what document is needed, like the, the whole process of it. It's a very long process. Actually, I've been doing it for the last six months, the whole process. I'm still not done with it yet. So since you're in year four and you have some time, uh, just uh, research like the whole process of it. Maybe read the this the current handbook, get a feel of what it's like to register. So you wouldn't when once you get your parchment in year five, you wouldn't need to um fumble. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Welcome. Does anyone else have any question? I mean, my C2, what? Hi, Krisha. Um, again, unfortunately, you have to get a parchment to uh, get everything going. Yeah. But since you are in SC2, you are year five, and I believe you are ending soon. So the moment you get your parchment, start your application. Um, yeah, you want to get in the system as fast as possible so that you can skip the NCA, because that's what happened to me. Uh, I graduated and I took one year to do my master's and then I only started applying for UKFPO. And because of that delay in one year alone, I had to take the National Clinical Assessment. Uh, it's not a very hard exam, but still it's an extra hassle you have to travel all the way to Manchester, which is expensive. You have to prepare for the exam, which people have failed. I know a few people who have failed this year alone and it's extra stress. So yeah, so uh, where else com as in comparison to my junior who just graduated? They literally just sign up for. They literally just sign up for UKFPO, fill in the form in Oreo and take the SJT and they are done. They can they are just offered a job. So yeah. Do you need your parchment? Uh yes, for GMC you will need your parchment uh, for GMC registration. 
Yeah. Uh, you will need your parchment because are you familiar with epic verification? Uh, OK. So when you sign up for your GMC account and you click that you want to have a GMC provisional registration, the GMC will want you to use this company called Epic and you will have to send them your parchment to verify with RCSI. So it's like you're going through a third party company to verify that your parchment is legit. So you do need your parchment for it. Any questions? Any other questions? Uh, I hope this session has been helpful <laughs> to someone uh, graduating in 2024. 2024. Uh, are you in 2024? 2022. So you are in IC3, right? Oh. Actually, no matter what, you can only sit for the SJT when you put in your application for UKFP or you can't take it like, uh, it's not like the IELTS where you just sign up separately and you sit for the exam. You have to go through the whole process of UKFPO and then UKFPO will tell you, okay, you can sign up for SJT now. Click this link and uh, sign up, uh, choose the date that you want. So it's not a separate exam, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I actually, since you guys are still like uh, probably year four, year five, if you guys have time, actually I would advise you guys to first get your documents in order, passport, IELTS, get IELTS done because I have seen people struggling. They've been taking IELTS like three times, four times. They were unable to meet the requirements. Uh, yeah, that's very important. Um, and probably do some research on the deaneries, like where you want to go in the UK. But if you do not care where you're going to go, uh, then I guess you don't need. But uh, yeah, because the UK is really big. And even now I'm struggling to like get everything in my head, like where I want to go, where I like. I'm just going, in, I'm actually just ranking blindly now, although you shouldn't do that. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. You're welcome. Any questions, guys? It's a bit early. <laughs> I hope I wasn't talking too fast. If anything is unclear, you can just ask me. I can just repeat it and yeah. Okay, if no one has any questions, so I guess we can end early today. Uh, if you have any questions, you can just, uh, I'll just put my email here. If you, have, if you guys have any questions, just you just drop me an email uh, or on Instagram or whatnot. I'll try to try my best to help you. Uh, yeah. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you. Thank right, you, thank you so much. Thank you, Krisha. Thank you, Shahir's brother. Uh, uh, wanted to ask, do we still have a seat if we could get? Uh, hi, MH. 
Uh, okay, so. Uh, are you from RCSI, PU RCSI Malaysia? I just just wanted to know. Okay, yeah. Um, my junior, who is in the same batch as UKFPO, he actually just used the dean statement as a proof. Uh, because Prof. Karen wrote that our course was actually carried out 100% in English. Okay, so my junior took the risk and he did not take the IELTS and he just submitted it and he got through with it. Uh, but I didn't want to take the risk. I, I was I just went and sat for the IELTS. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I can't really I can't really answer for you in that sense. But it it he he did manage to go through without the IELTS. Yeah. Okay, welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, hi, Shahir's brother. Thank you so much for the recording. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Bye.